business. So you see that the system itself is not really helping for people to get ahead from the uh, economic point of view. The system tends to be stifling. And because I lived my life in the United States, or I lived a, a, a few years in the United States, I really understand a great deal here of how this country has more or less a system that helps people to advance instead of uh, breaking uh, their back. Now, that we consider this from uh, economic injustice from the national level, I just mentioned the, about uh, Haiti, we also see it uh, from the international level too. There are small countries such as uh, uh, Haiti are unable to compete against a bigger country such as the United States, for instance. We might not be able to produce. We not able to uh, compete uh, uh, fairly in, in, a, in an open uh, market, market. So things like that uh, tend to uh, break things down. I always uh, marvel at uh, the, this uh, um, situation. The, the cost of a tractor and then the cost of a, a, a pound of coffee. We in Haiti, we produce the, the, the coffee. But uh, you guys, you in the uh, Western world, especially in America, you make the tractor. But uh, unfortunately, the, the cost of a tractor is like, for, by the time it gets to Haiti, it's look closer to 60, 70, 80,000 dollars. And then do you think of how many pounds of coffee I have to produce in order to make 60,000 dollars to buy a tractor? You see the big uh, difference. And unfortunately, you fix the price for the tractor, and you also happen to fix the price for the pound of coffee. I guess I should have done that. I should have that responsibility, but I don't. So this is an international, I'm just giving you one perhaps clever example so that you understand that the situation, the imbalance sometimes, things are, that, that, that are caused by certain things. And the third cause for poverty is the mental choice some people make. I travel much uh, um, around my country. I talk with different people from different kinds. You would not believe that I actually found people, somehow they prefer, it's, it's hard to say, but it is true. In the way they talk, it looks like they prefer poverty in the, instead of uh, anything else. They tend to be quite fatalistic in their approach. They can be very negative. You talk to them, you tell them that there is another way. God has another plan. They would not listen. They prefer that. So it's, it's, a, it's a mindset. It's a mental choice they make. So these things that I mentioned can cause serious poverty, both economic as well as intellectual. But now that I said that, we talked about types of poverty, we talked about causes of poverty. I must also say that there really is a cure for poverty. There really is. And it is in the sense that we see it in Micah chapter uh, 6, verse 8. Since you are not familiar with this verse, I might as well uh, read it uh, for you or with you. Micah chapter 6, verse 8. You will see three things that the Lord is asking us to do, to really consider. Uh, this is what the Lord says. He has showed you, O oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Three important acts, three important steps to take. Acting justly, love mercy, and walk humbly. I must say that because of my dealings with uh, Americans uh, of all different uh, uh, walks of life for so many years, that uh, generosity has never been a big problem for uh, most Americans that I've seen. It's not generosity. I've seen that many people here in this country love to give. As a matter of fact, uh, I went to school and I didn't pay any money. In fact, it is it's probably fair for me to say that it looks like I was paid to go to school. <laughs> you paid for me to go to school. People just like you, because I did benefit from uh, uh, several academic scholarships. That's, that's, that's because of your generosity. This is not a big issue. What I'm asking, w w want you to, to see is that 
the Lord can use you more to do even more. The Lord can go further with you. As it will be a matter of rearranging your priorities. That's what, what is going to be. It will be a matter of uh, not really seeing your life only here in this great city or in this great state, but to see that hmm, the Lord may have a purpose that is even bigger than the state of Minnesota for you or even than the city of Andover for you. The Lord wants you to go <clears throat> further. He wants me to go further too. As a matter of fact, that's why I, I am here. He, he wants us to embark on a big project with him. The problem for us many on many, many instances, on many occasions, you know, I mean, I could go on and long, on and on and on on this issue, even if I had the entire month to preach on that. The problem is that, my friends, is we forgot about stewardship. We forgot. We think we own things. We think, in, and, and in reality, we do not own. We are just managers of God's wealth, of God's resources. So this morning, I really want us to understand that as managers, how we are going to give an account back. Our problem very often, my friends, is the fact that we have, uh, this is that phrase right there, walk humbly. We tend not to walk humbly. We do have, a, that's a big problem with uh, Americans that I've seen sometimes. Oh, it's not true, no, 